Hey guys, in this video I want to present problem 4 from this year's Romanian Masters of Mathematics. We consider two integers a and b greater than 1. For n greater than or equal to 1, we let rn be the residue of b to the power of n divided by a to the power of n. So 0 is less than or equal to rn is less than a to the power of n. We have given that after some point rn is always strictly less than 2 to the power of n divided by n. And we are asked to prove that this implies a divides b, which just says that rn always equals 0. If I had to get the behavior of rn as n tends to infinity, I would probably say that rn sometimes takes large values close to a to the power of n and sometimes smaller ones. Unless, of course, we are in the trivial case where a divides b. One takeaway from this heuristic is that we want to compare rn for different values of n. And the simplest way to do this is to notice that a condition modulo a to the power of n plus 1 also gives us a condition modulo a to the power of n. So let's compare the two given equations for n and n plus 1. We have rn plus 1 is congruent to b to the power of n plus 1 modulo a to the power of n plus 1 and therefore also modulo a to the power of n. And b to the n plus 1 is just b times b to the n which is congruent to b times rn modulo a to the power of n. Let us notice that we assume that rn grows quite slowly, so slow that b times rn will clearly be less than a to the power of n after some point. And we want to write this down. So we have b times rn is less than b times 2 to the power of n divided by n, at least when n is greater than or equal to capital N. And now we bound 2 to the power of n from above by a to the power of n. So this is less than or equal to b divided by n times a to the power of n. And now if b is less than or equal to n, then this will be less than or equal to a to the power of n. I think that bounding the side of the right side from above was a very natural step in light of this condition here. But now that we have this inequality, we are very motivated to try to prove the same thing for the left side. Because if we know that b times rn is less than a to the power of n, and rn plus 1 is also less than a to the power of n, we don't have this yet, but if this were true, then our congruence would immediately imply, because both things are non-negative, that the left-hand side and the right-hand side are equal, which is a lot stronger than the congruence itself. But proving this works almost the same way as before. We have rn plus 1 is less than 2 to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1, at least when n plus 1 is greater than or equal to n, or just n greater than or equal to n. And now we can bound 2 to the power of n, again from above, by a to the power of n, and we will be left with 2 divided by n plus 1, which is less than or equal to 1, and therefore this is just less than or equal to a to the power of n as desired. In conclusion, if n is greater than or equal to the maximum of capital N and B, which we might as well call n prime, then we have that the two desired inequalities hold, which implies by the orange implication that Rn plus 1 is indeed equal to B times Rn. We have this equality for any n greater than or equal to n prime, and therefore induction tells us that for n greater than or equal to n prime, we have rn equals b to the power of n minus n prime times rn prime. This should already imply that eventually rn will grow faster than this upper bound. So let's bound this expression from below by 2 to the power of n minus n prime times rn prime. So we get for n greater than or equal to n prime, 2 to the power of n divided by n should be greater than 2 to the power of n divided by 2 to the power of n prime times rn prime. Hence, rn prime is less than 2 to the power of n prime divided by n. And since this is true for all n greater than or equal to n prime, we can let n tend to infinity, which gives us rn prime equals 0. So the remainder of b to the power of n prime upon division by a to the power of n prime is zero. In other words, a to the n prime divides b to the n prime, which clearly also implies a divides b. 
and therefore we are done.